وهو البشير هو النذير وارو هذا الكون ما أعلاه ما أحلاه أبدا ترفوه بمن فيك الأفواه يا خير من ينتاهه اللواه يا خير من ينتاهه اللواه وهو أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله مشاهدون الكرام في كل مكان أتصيب الله أوقاتكم Wa akul assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Distinguished brothers and sisters in Islam From wherever you're watching this telecast from across the world My name is Ajar Ahmed Tijani And I welcome you to Risala to Ramadan Yet Or you call it Risala to Ramadan Ramadan Messages is the program And today we're going to kick start by welcoming the noble guest in our midst When we talk about noble guests In Arabic, a guest is ضيف. ها قد جاءكم ضيف كريم يطرق الباب القلوب والجوارح من جديد ليعلك آب رب البرايات ويزهدها في الدنيا وما فيها من الشهوات. This noble guest has come knocking at the door of our hearts. To do what? To reunite us back with our own creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This guest has come with all the freebies and the goodies, all the, you know, the best, the best of gifts that you can ever imagine in the world. The guest has come to take us back to our roots, our roots which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. It is the root to reunite humanity back to divinity. ضيف كريم جاء ومعه من الماء النكي ليكسل الأوذار والمآسي والذنوب التي بها فسدت الجوائر وقتلت القلوب ضيف من تركه بدون تكريم ولا حسن الضيافة خسر وخاب وندم وظل في غيائب الظلم والظلمات ومن أحسن لقاءه فلح وأدرك النجاح وصار على درب الصالحين here is a noble guest that has come with a special water for purification. A water that is going to cleanse our hearts from all the deaths of sins. The water that is going to clean our mind and our soul from the debris of all mahrumat and dunub. When we mention dunub, we're talking about those things that God forbids us from doing. We have been doing this many, many times over and over again from last year till this year. And we do not want to continue this way. And that spells the essence of this noble guest in our midst. What is the use of the visitation of this guest? This is what we are going to look at on today's program. When this guest comes, don't forget, Subhanahu, Allah, you know, encourages us to receive guests in a very best form. A Muslim should know that part of his deen is to welcome a guest. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi adhis in akhir qal, Uh, the noble prophet said in one of his hadiths that Laysa minna man lam yukrimu daif. He is not part of us who does not welcome or receives majestically a visitor. At some point he said, Waman kana yu'min billah wal yawm al akhir. Man kana yu'min billah. He who claims to believe in Allah wal yawm al akhir. And the day of judgment, he must 
take it as a point of duty to receive visitors. Receiving visitors is one of the attributes of Islam. Even it is one of the traditions of the people of Salaf from Nabi Yulai Adam. And of course, the ground of them, or let me say the ground receivers of uh, the, the visitor is Nabi Yulai Ibrahim. So this is one thing in Islam that is being encouraged over and over for all Muslims to do. Now, if we, according to this, um, uh, th this message, decide to turn our back on the visitor, uh, women, women taraka biduni tekirim, he who leaves or decides not to welcome or receive this noble visitor, wala husnet diyafa, and maybe you receive, but you do not receive very well. That person is considered to be a loser. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pray not to count us among those people that will be losers. He who receives, he who prepares, he who, you know, uh, he, he have a, a, a better, a solid preparation to receive this guest we are talking about. That person has actually uh, succeeded in life. That person has been blessed. Mercies of Allah will abide the person from day and night. What or who is the guest we are talking about? Distinguished Muslim brothers and sisters, have a day who are Ramadan. The noble guest we are talking about is Ramadan. Ramadan has come, Ramadan 2021. Ramadan uh, 1442 Hijri has come to us again. It is for humanity, the whole world, Muslim world, to receive this noble guest. How do we receive the noble guest? It is not about you know, stocking your, your, your home with foods. It is not about changing, you know, the, the cloth of your table. It is not about going to the market to buy all the dates, the best of dates. Yes, these are part of the preparation of receiving the noble guests. But hey, what we need for you to do to have a spiritual transformation because Ramadan is stacked. It comes with many names. It is called the month of Rahmah, the month of Gufran, the month of uh, Al Istijaba. Yani, Ramadan is a month of favor. It is the month of blessing. It is the month of mercies from Almighty Allah. So, how do we receive this noble guest? Like I said, it is not about changing your clothes. It is not about you you know, uh, you know, changing some people in their homes by this time will begin to change maybe the bowls, the plates, the tray, the spoons and everything, all the, the cutleries even in the kitchen, you know, just to receive it. Well, that is also part of it. But to experience that spiritual transformation, to experience the cleansing of our soul from the death, from the debris of sins, we need to also prepare our hearts because the noble guest is not knocking on the door, on the physical door of our homes. It is not knocking on the gates of the mosque. Rather, he is knocking on the door of our hearts. So we must be able to open our hearts to receive this noble guest. Dayfun Kareem, Dayfun Aziz, Dayfun Minallah. Ramadan Kareem to all Muslim brothers and sisters and sisters across the world from anywhere you're watching this program. Now, how do we receive it? On this program, we are going to go for a Quran break. And when we come back, the program is Risala to Ramadan. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
This is Risalatul Ramadan and my name is Ajara Ahmed Tijani. Before we went for that Quran break, we were talking about how to receive the noble guest. The noble guest, like I said earlier on, is Ramadan. Ramadan 2021 is here and Muslims across the world are fasting, are observing fasting right now. And how, as a Muslim, are you supposed to receive this noble guest? Number one thing is for you to be appreciative of the gift of life. You have to thank God for keeping you alive till this year. How many people that witnessed or observed last year's Ramadan and this year there are no more? The world is going through a lot. Pandemic is one of them. This hydra-headed monster has claimed lives of millions across the globe. Here you are, 2021, still hale and hearty. You are still very healthy. And what do you owe Allah in this regard? Other than shukr. إِذَا كَانَ شُكُرُ اللَّهِ لِلْعَبْدِ نَعِمَةً what you need to do is to register your unreserved appreciation to Allah for the gift of life, for keeping you hale and healthy to this moment. You don't just gallivating or just jump around and say, oh, Ramadan is here. Oh, I'm a Muslim. It's the best time in the world. Oh, this is the best place to observe, uh, you know, fasting and the rest of it. Or oh, because my parents uh, are going to prepare the best of food for iftar. Or maybe there are some charity groups or organizations that are going to be visiting your homes to give you glad tidings. Yes, it is one of it. But the best way to appreciate Allah is to abstain from sin. 
Don't forget. Kam kunta ta'rif mimma soma fi salafin. Min bayni ahlin wa jiranin wa ikhwani. Afna umul maut. Wastabkoka ba'dahumu hayyan. Fama akraba al-kasi min al-dan. Kam kunta ta'rif mimma soma fi salafin. How many of those people that you yourself can say, I know this person. Oh, he's my relative. Oh, this person is my family. He's my brother. He's my parents. My father. My mother. Oh, he's a distant uh, relative. He's a friend. Either from within your community, from your home, from your community, from your state, from your country, or from across the world that are no more today. من بين أهل وجيران وإخوان أفنى أم الموت. The hands of death, the cold hands of death, has come to take them to their rub. أفنى أم الموت واستبقوك بعدهم. And here you are, still living. You're still very much alive, sound. حيا فما أكرب الكاس من الدان. The difference between you and those people that are no more is just that thing that is making you to move around. So you need to really, really, really register your appreciation to Allah. How do you do that? By saying Alhamdulillah. Yes, that is the first recommendation. You've got to say Alhamdulillah mirar. Yani, you say it from time to time to Allah for the gift of life. But sometimes the word the kalmatu shukr or kalmat alhamd is not limited to just a mere word spoken from your mouth you know but sometimes you show it even with all your jawarih yani you show it with all your body system how do you do this you've got to do a, a, what we call following and obey and obeying you know all the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstain abstaining from things that allah forbid us from doing now this will take us to the root meaning of the kalma as-sawm. Mamana as-sawm fi, fi, fi islam When we mention soul, because when you say Ramadan, as for Ramadan, a soul. Now, the Arabic word for fasting is called sawm in the Quran. The word sawm literally means to abstain. Yani al-imsaq. Or al kaf and shayin to stop or you know you just withdraw back from doing something or abstaining from doing something. Uh, that's why Sharia they interpret Ramadan fasting to be al imsak and the shurb wal akl wa shahwat. In the Sharia form, it is interpreted. It is translated to mean holding or abstaining from uh, doing bad things, abstaining from drinking, abstaining from uh, eating, or looking at muharramat, yani those things that God does not permit us to do. We can also get the meaning from Quran, Surah Maryam. Maryam in the Quran said, Fakuli. Uh, Today, I have chosen to hold my lip, not to speak to anyone, just to abstain yani lillah, for Allah. So in this regard, best way to appreciate Allah, to thank God for the gift of life, is by abstaining from those things that you know can actually destroy the essence of fasting. Those things that can anger Allah. Those things that you know are against humanity. You know yourself. You know what you have been doing. You know some of the things that you have been saying around. Some people engage or indulge in slandering. Some talk about people behind them. Some cast people. Some look at you know, shahwat, uh, they, they look at things that are forbidden. It could be uh, looking at those things that Allah said we should not look at. It could be 
about talking about things that Allah has forbidden us from talking about. It could be about, you know, using even your body to do things that Allah said we must not do. So, al-imsak al-dunub, al-imsak al-muharramat, it is abstaining, uh, or it is holding yourself back from those things that are tempting, that are of the world, the materialistic things in, 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 in summary. Uh, the meaning of the ayah that I quoted is I have vowed, according to Maryam, uh, Maryam uh, Ummu Nabiullah Isa. Is, she said, I have vowed a psalm fasting for the sake of the merciful. So today I shall not speak to anyone. That's Quran 19 verse 26. According to Sharia, the word psalm means to abstain from all those things that are forbidden during fasting, from the break of dawn to the sunset, and to do this with the intention of fasting. Now, listen to this word very carefully. When they say you must do this, when you abstain or abstain from those things that are forbidden during fasting from the break of dawn to uh, the sunset, and do this with the intention of fasting, that simply means that intention is very important in anything that you are doing. Don't forget, a psalm is one pillar of, of the five pillars of Islam. Now, there is one popular hadith that says, Everything is with its intention. Now, the intention to go on fasting because there are some people out there who may not have eaten even for a day or even for more than 48 hours intention really matters that is the saying now purpose of fasting is another thing that we must consider uh, quran chapter 2 verse 183 says ya amanu كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ Oh you, oh you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who were before you in order that you may learn taqwa. Another interpretation says, fasting has been decreed upon you. Another interpretation says, fasting has been ordered to all Muslim. Like we have decreed it upon those who were before you in order that you may learn taqwa. Kutiba alaykum siyam. We made fasting as a compulsory exercise for all Muslim ummah. You must, as a Muslim, prepare your mind for this fasting. You don't say, oh, I'm a gluten. You don't say, oh, I can't do away, you know, without eating junks. You, can, you can't say, oh, I, I, I am a, a cigarette addict, which is one of those things that we will talk about, inshallah, as we move on on the program. You wouldn't say, oh, because I am very addicted to uh, one particular thing, because addiction is one of the things that Ramadan has come to teach us to make us to learn how to do away with things. In Islam, there is nothing like addiction. The only thing you can be addicted to is Quran and Allah, Tasbih. Now, Quran made us to know that the essence, the purpose to which Ramadan is prescribed or is, is ordained to mankind or Muslim Ummah is for us to attain taqwa. Now, taqwa is one word in Arabic that requires extension of meaning. Now, if we begin to look at it, we will realize that it is what is required of all Muslims to really, really, really take cognizance of. Now, it is not enough to say, oh, I, I, I like drinking water. If you look at this moment now, in this part of the world, it is very sunny. 
the weather is very hot. So drinking water is one thing that the body is actually requesting for from time to time. But abstaining from it is one of the, 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 the essence of Ramadan. And that's why they say another meaning of fast of Ramadan or so is sobru. What is sobru? Patience. If you, you've got to be patient enough to know that, oh, this food, as delicious as it is, I've got to stay away from it. Or this uh, drink, maybe wine or maybe anything that is very, very, you know, tasty, is something that actually, uh, you know, catch your attention. But you've got to run away from it. That is the purpose of Ramadan. Now, la'allakum tattakun. Some may interpret it to mean so that you may, uh, you know, attain piety. But other tafasir, yani al mufasirun, interpreted it to mean la'allah. They say la'allah. The word la'allah there simply means surely. It is a family of inna, if you are very uh, conversant with Arabic words. La'allakum tattakun. So that you will surely, if you follow all the rules and guidelines of fasting, you will definitely attain piety. You will attain taqwa. Muslim brothers and sisters and sisters across the world from anywhere you're watching this program, we want to encourage us to follow all the rules and guidelines of fasting. Ramadan comes once in a year and we've got to respect it. We've got to welcome and receive it in, with, all, with all our hearts, with all the resources around us because we will not be able to have it again. It comes once in a year and when it goes, you've got to wait for it, if that's if you are still alive, to witness yet another one. Taqwa is a very important spiritual and ethical term of the Quran. It is the sum total of all Islamic spirituality and ethics it is a quality in a believer's life that keeps him or her aware of God, aware of Allah all the time. A person who has taqwa, loves to do good and avoid evil for the sake of Allah. Taqwa is piety. Muslim brothers, distinguished Muslim brothers and sisters, we will continue with this uh, message inshallah from tomorrow and mashallah ta'ala we will let us know one of the barakah one of the blessings one of the mercies of Ramadan Ramadan Kareem Muslim brothers and sisters from wherever you're watching my name is Ajara Ahmed Tijani once again Assalamu alaikum Ramadan Kareem <laughs> Ya khayra man yanta